अनाजना शलाकया चक्षुरुन्मिलित तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित भूतले स्वयं कदा तदाति स्वदाक वंदे श्री गुरुन् श्रीयुतापतकमल श्री गुरुन् वैष्णव श्री रूप सा सगणारगुनाता तम सजीव सात्द स्वावदूद परिजना साहिद कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधाकृष्णपाद सहगना ललिता श्री विशाखान्वश्च हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगत्पते कोपीश गोपिका का राधा कांता नमोष्टुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुष्टुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रि वाशकूब्य कृपा सिंधुभ पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवीभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअदाधार श्रीवासादि गौरव निंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण Please accept my humble obeisances, Prabhu Ji. Done with pranam. Uh, please accept our humble obeisances on behalf of everybody and the group who have joined and are about to join, Prabhu Ji. <coughs> Prabhu Ji, we are reading the Shrimad Bhagavatam. We are uh, reading Canto One, Chapter Eight, and the text for today is text thirty-four, Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna. Hare. Narayan Namaskritam Nam Chayva Narutamam. श्लोके भक्ति ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय So we are in on the in the first canto, chapter eight, verse number thirty-four. Bharava tara na 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 ye bhuvo na va ibo dato siddhante bhuri bhare na jato hi atma bhuva sit sata. Translation by Shri Prabhupada <coughs> and for for by Shri Prabhupada. Others say that the world, being overburdened like a boat at sea, is much aggrieved, and that Brahma, who is your son, prayed for you, and so you have appeared to diminish the trouble. Mother, you can read the purport. Purport by Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada ki jai. <clears throat> Brahma, or the first living being born just after the creation, is a direct son of Narayana. Narayana, as a Garbhadakshaya Vishnu, first of all 
entered the material universe. Without spiritual content, matters cannot create. Without spiritual contact, matter cannot create. This principle was followed from the very beginning of the creation. The Supreme Spirit enters entered the universe and the first living being, Brahma, was born on the lotus flower grown out of the transcendental abdomen of Vishnu. Vishnu is therefore known as Pad, Padmanabha. Brahma is known as Atmabhu because he was begotten directly from the father without any contact of mother Lakshmiji. Lakshmiji was present near, near Narayan, engaged in the service of the Lord, and still without contact with Lakshmiji, Narayan begot Brahma. That is the omnipotency of the Lord. One who foolishly considers Narayana like other living beings should take lesson from this. Narayana is not an ordinary living being. He is the personality of Godhead himself, and he has all the potencies of all senses in all parts of his transcendental body. An ordinary living man begets a child by sexual intercourse, and he has no other means to beget a child other than one designed from him. But Narayan, being omnipotent, is not bound to any condition of energy. He is complete and independent to do anything and everything <clears throat> by his previous potencies very easily and perfectly. Brahma is therefore directly the son of the father and was not put into the womb of the mother. Therefore, he is known as Atmabhu. This Brahman is in charge of further creations in the universe. Secondary, reflected by the potency of omnipotent. Within the halo of the universe, there is a transcendental planet known as Shvetadvipa, which is the abode of Shiradakshaya Vishnu, the Paramatma feature of the Supreme Lord. Whenever there is trouble in the universe that cannot be solved by the administrative demigods, they approach Brahmaji for a solution. And if it is not to be solved, even by Brahmaji, then Brahmaji consults and prays to Shiradakshaya Vishnu for an incarnation and solution to the problems. Such a problem arose when Kamsa and other were ruling over the earth and earth became too much overburdened by the misdeeds of the Asuras. Brahmaji, along with other demigods, prayed at the shore of Shirodakshaya Ocean, and they were advised of the descent of Krishna as the son of Vasudeva and Devaki. So some people say that the Lord appeared because of the prayers of Brahmaji. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Madhuri. Okay, so in this couple of words, Maharani Kunti is praying and giving out various reasons why you appeared. And many, many reasons have been given earlier. Like in the previous verse, it says, because Vasudev and Dev he prayed for you. Others said, it was to glorify the Yadu dynasty. And <clears throat> others said that many, many pastors of Maharani Kunti is remembering them. But the verse for today is explaining that others say that the world being overburdened, like a boat at sea, is much aggrieved, and that Brahma, who is your son, prayed for you, and so you have appeared to diminish the trouble. So, <clears throat> this metaphor is used. A boat burdened at the sea. You'll find that sometimes uh, the earth becomes very heavy, not due to the weight, but due to sinful activities. Like when Krishna appeared, before Krishna appeared, uh, we should understand that the earth had a lot of burden. And all of the burden is explained in the Bhag Bhagavatam. Practically all the Kshatriyas, the whole Kshatriya was, had become demonic, like Kamsa, Jarasan, Sishupal, Dantvakar, and so on. And the burden becomes so much that the earth, the Bhumi, had to go to Brahma, and along with Shiva and many other demigods, they stood at the shore of the milk of ocean, which is mentioned here, 
Shirodakshai Vishnu, which I'll explain to you later, and pray to the Lord, please help me. So when there is a burden on the earth, the Lord, the, I mean, Brahma prayers or even Indra prayers, we all know that in, there is a verse we did uh, earlier. Ethi chamsha kalopumsha krishna stu bhagavan swayam indrari vyakulam lokam mirdayanti yuge yuge. It is said that Vyashtev in the third chapter of the same, same first canto, when he described all the incarnations, finally he says that all these incarnations are expansions or the expansions of Krishna. But the original person or the original Supreme Personality of God is, is Swayam Bhagavan is Krishna. And then in the next time it says, Indra Ari Vyakulam Lokam. Even when Indra has problem in administration, then he goes to Krishna. And the Lord appears. Now, how does he appear? He comes here from Shiradakshai Vishnu. We all know that we also Shiradakshai Vishnu in our heart, known as Paramatma. Now, this particular Shiradakshai Vishnu is actually a transcendental planet where the Lord resides. And from there, the incarnation comes. So at least this much we should know. Sri Prabhupada explains further that Brahma is born of Narayana. Now let's go back a little bit. We find that Krishna's first expansion or direct expansion, Swam Swamsa, is Balram. And then from Balram comes quadruple expansions, which is known as Vasudev, Sankarshan, Pradipananida. Later on, from Mahasankarshan comes Narayan. And from Narayan, we find, from, now this Narayan literally refers to Garbhadakshaya Vishnu. From his navel, Brahma is born. And it's not that the creation just came out of some chemicals. If you hear Shri in many, many lectures, he says, people just imagine that there were some chemicals which mixed up and then the life was born. No, life came from life. And not just in person, it came from a person. So Vedic understanding or the understanding of Srimad Bhagavatam is the origin of everything is Krishna. Even the quadruple expansion, Narayan, they are all persons. And then from that person came this whole entire creation. Krishna clears this very much in the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita where he says, speaks of two energies, material energy, spiritual energy. Material energy is made up of eight elements. <clears throat> Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and force. Many people are, are confused. They say mind is spiritual. No, mind is material, not spiritual. Soul is spiritual, but mind, intelligence is not spiritual, is material. We spiritualize it by engaging the mind and intelligence in the service of Krishna. This Krishna explains to Arjuna in the 12th chapter. I think it's verse number eight. He says, Mayeva Manodachwa Mai Buddhi Niveshya Niveshya Mayeva Atahurdvam Nasamshya. Give your mind and intelligence to me. In this way, you will live with me. Or in other words, you will live with Krishna. If you want to live with Krishna, then two things you have to offer the, your full mind and your full intelligence. Can anyone else you say who offered mind intelligence to Krishna? Which devotee? Fully to Krishna. It's not one, there are many. But there's a general name, I give you the hint. Who gave their mind in in Krishna, that they cannot forget Krishna, even for a second. Who is that? Pralat Maharaj. <clears throat> no, still, still, still better than that. Dhruv Maharaj. Mind and intelligence. Remember, I asked the question, mind, you see, when your mind is in Krishna, you cannot forget Krishna. When your intelligence is in Krishna, you cannot forget Krishna even for a minute, even if you try to. Who are these devotees? We all Narad, know that. Narad Mani? No, 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 no. It's the gopis of Vrindavan. The gopis are the highest. And we are following their footsteps. If we get the gopi, this gopi's mercy, then Krishna is very easy. And what is the secret of the gopis? 
They're completely engaged in Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada again explains in one lecture that we try to remember Krishna by chanting, hearing, remembering. The gopis, they try to forget Krishna, but they can't forget Krishna. <laughs> that is the difference. So that is called giving your mind intelligence in the service of Krishna. And this is called Raganuga. Raganuga means spontaneous service. Not, they are not bound by rules and regulations. Sleeping, waking up, cooking, nursing their child, serving their husband, maybe hearing some abuses from the mother-in-law, but they cannot forget Krishna. These are the gopis. That is called giving mind intelligence in Krishna. Now, Krishna Prabhuji, yeah. Prabhuji, is mind intelligence an ego or only mind intelligence? No. Ego is purified. Then it's real ego. We have ego. When it becomes purified, it becomes real ego. Oh, my so the eight ego. elements are what? What are the eight elements? False ego. False earth, ego. Water, fire, yeah. Earth, water, fire, air, ether. Man, buddhi, ankar. Mind, intelligence, and false ego. False ego. Yeah. Now, when we do bhakti, then that false ego becomes into real ego. Do you know what is real ego? Can yes, you try? Yes. Yeah, what is real that we are not this body, we are uh, the soul. Yeah, and furthermore, we are eternally the servitors of Krishna. Jivira Sarupai, Krishna and Nitya Das, that is really cool. When you come to, to this understanding that actually, constitutionally, I am the servitor of Krishna. That is called real ego. That is not pride. Okay? And it's not material, it is spiritual. That means your ego becomes purified. So anyway, Lord Vishnu is called Padmanabha. If you go a few verses back, I think it's 21. There's a beautiful prayer. It says, Namo Pankajana Bahaya, Namo Pankaja Mahalide, Namo Pankaja Naitraya, Namaste Pankaja Angriye. My respect for my senses are to you, are unto you. O Lord, whose abdomen is marked with a depression, like a lotus flower, and who are always decorated with garlands of lotus flowers whose glance is as cool as the lotus, and whose feet are engraved with lotuses. So everything about Krishna is lotus. So in this verse also, it says, from the navel of Lord Vishnu, that's why Lord Vishnu is also called Padmanabha. Padmanabha means, the navel is also like uh, lotus. <laughs> Sorry. And from the navel sprouts the lotus flower where Brahma is born. And then in other words, Lord Narayan is no ordinary being, the way the Mayavad is saying. <coughs> Sorry. The Mayavad is saying that anybody can become Narayan. No, you can't become Narayan. Narayan remains Narayan. And in one lecture, Shri Prabhupada heavily speaks about that. He says that when Mayavadis get together, they say, Namo Narayan, Namo Narayan. It means you are Narayan, I am Narayan. But if everyone is Narayan, then who is the real Narayan? Prabhupada then says that they, uh, it means that even a cat is a Narayan. That they should say cat Narayan, dog Narayan, donkey Narayan. If everyone became Narayan, then where is Narayan? To my body understanding is completely bogus. At the same time, it is atheistic. If you hear such kind of philosophy, even a little devotion you have will go away. That's what Chitani Mahaprabhu says. Mayavadi bhashi shivule haya sarvanash. Do not hear Mayavadi. Better close your ears, but don't hear them. Once you hear them, all your devotion, all your faith in Krishna will be ruined forever. So we have to be very careful that Narayan is not an ordinary being. And here, from Narayan sprouts the lotus, and that means Garbhadakshai Vishnu. And on the lotus is born Brahma. So Brahma is called Atmabhu. Atmabhu means self-born. It's also called Swayambhu. Don't mix this word, word with Shambhu. Shambhu means Shiva. Swayambhu means Brahma. Words are quite, when you hear, they look very similar. These are two, 12 Mahajas. These are the first two. Swayambhu, Shambhu, Narada, like that. So Swayambhu means Lord Brahma, refers to Lord Brahma. When Brahma was created, 
then he tried to look around, where did I come from? This, as you go in the third chapter, this will be mentioned. And all he saw was darkness. He was on the, on the lotus flower. So what did he do? He went down the stem of the lotus. As he went down, all he saw, all he found was water. Again, he came back. And then later on, he was given, he was told to perform tapa. That's why first two words were tapa. And then he realized that <clears throat> from whom I have come, or from this lotus where he's come, is a person who is lying down there. From whom I, this lotus flower has come. And you may not know in the lotus stem are the 14 planetary systems. Such a big lotus. So lotus actually literally means the creation. And this creation is coming from Narayan. So don't forget the word Swayam Bhu. Swayam means by himself. Bhu means created, living entity. So Swetadip is in one corner of the universe. Whenever there is a problem, the, what do you call, Brahma, Indra, Shiva, all the demigods, they come together. Now they cannot go to Swetadip. So they stand on the shore of the Swetadip and actually pray to them. You can hear a vivid description if you go to the 10th canto, right in the beginning, before Krishna takes birth, what actually happened? As I explained in the beginning of the class, Mother Bhumi was overburdened because of these Kshatriyas who were actually crooks, cheaters, and demons in disguise of Kshatriyas. They were not Kshatriyas. And they were creating so much burden on the earth. Now many of us think that if you kill someone, if you steal, if you do this, this is all sin. But the biggest sin is if you are a liar. And all these were crooked. They were more than liars. So Mother Bhumi went to Brahma. Brahma, along with Shiva, Indra, they prayed to, to Lord Narayan, please come and help. And all they could hear is Dwani. Dwani means vibration. They cannot actually see face to face. Because the Lord is quite far. It's like an island. So the answer came. I will descend along with my plenary expansion. Means before Krishna, Balram was already sent, then came Krishna, and then the whole entourage came. And this is how Krishna appears. He does his work, he finishes his mission, and again he goes back. And that is called Yada Yadahi Dharmashya Glanir Bhavati Bharata. Whenever, whenever there is a decline in religious principles, as explained by Gita, fourth chapter, verse number seven. I descend. And what is the mission? Paritnaya sadhunam vinashaya chitushita dharma samstapana arthaya arthaya sambhavami yuge yuge. I come to deliver the pious. I come to punish the miscreants and I reestablish the religious principles. Because time to time the religious principles become distorted or misinterpreted or people want to adapt in their own way. And Krishna comes to correct it. The religion remains the same. This is due to ignorance. People have named the religion with different names. Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Jews, and Buddhists, and Jains, and so on. But the real religion is our relationship with Krishna, our loving relationship with Krishna, which is natural. Even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, love of Krishna is already there in a dormant state in the heart of everyone. And by hearing, that love can open. Hearing, chanting, remembering, and others. In other words, by doing bhakti, and the first step in bhakti is to hear about Krishna. So in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Nitya Siddha Krishna Bhakti, Sadhya Kabunai, Shravan Adi Sudha Chite Koriya Udai. It is already there in the heart. All you have to do is hear about Krishna. Even when we chant, if we hear the chanting, it is sufficient. It is sufficient even for an ignorant man. If he starts chanting, then automatically the love of Krishna will come out. I'll give you a simple example. You may have seen a wood called sandalwood. It's called chandan. Now, if you smell it, it's very sweet smell. But what happens if you put water and you, what do you call, rub it on a rough stone? The more smell will come out. But you have to do rubbing. The same way you have to do hearing. 
as you're hearing the amrita, amrita means uh, what do you call nectar. The nectar pours from the ear. It has to pour from both the ears. It goes to the heart. And as it enters the heart, it purifies the heart. And when the mirror is cleaned up, you can see things as they are. That's why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Chetu Darpan Marjanam Bhava Mahadwagari Nirvapanam. That this Sankirtan movement is a process of cleansing your heart. And then many other effects will come out, including the love of Krishna. That's why hearing is the foremost process. And if you go to Bhagavad Gita, as far as, as I know, minimum a dozen times Prabhupada quotes or says hearing, most important. Very, 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 very important. Like if you go to 13th chapter 22, verse, if you go to the purple, it says, we have been taken, taking birth in Sat and Asad Yoni. Sat Yoni is like a human, human being or demigod. Asad Yoni is like animals, trees, plants, fishes, birds, and so on. But if you want to come out of this repeated perpetual cycle of birth and death, the only way is hearing. Very clear instruction. So if you, it's why hearing is so much emphasized. Even in the first canto, in the second chapter, Hearing is so much emphasized. In five verses, the first one is Srinvatam Shu Katha Krishna Punya Shravana Kritam. Hidyoshi Hi Abhadrani Vidu Nati Shuhitsatam. Simply by hearing about Krishna, all that is inspicious in your heart will be removed. And then the love of Krishna will be established. And in the other verses to follow, it says, as you hear, you rise above the mode of ignorance and passion, and you come to the mode of goodness, minimum, simply by hearing. And when you come to the mode of goodness, then the lust and greed will be removed from your heart. You will not have lusty desires, lusty feelings, nor the greed for having anything will be there. You can easily rise about it. And if you remain fixed in that, then the effect is that you will become fixed in the service of Krishna. And as you become Fixed in the service of Krishna, there's no question of love of Krishna. It will naturally come. So all this is available to all of us, but we have to hear about Krishna, not anything else. Now, where do you hear about Krishna? In a moment, two special books are there. One is Bhagavad Gita, the other one is Bhagavatam. Bhagavad Gita has to be read daily. Bhagavatam has to be heard daily. If you, if you read Bhagavad Gita daily, you'll never go wrong. It does not matter which page, which chapter, which paragraph. It's written in such a way, it will uplift you. It will, re, it will because our mind, because we are conditioned so, we are again and again, we fall down. And we go into the material consciousness, is able to lift us up. And again, we become spiritualized. For example, a person who is not a devotee, what is his life? His life is three things. Shoka, moha, bhaya. Shoka means lament. Moha means attachment. Bhaya, fear. These three things is the life of a materialistic person. Shoka, moha, bhaya. But if you engage in Krishna consciousness, especially hearing, chanting, remembering, and meditating on Krishna, then these three elements are removed from your heart forever. That is why it is said that when you hear about Krishna, you become a different person. You're no more on a material platform. You may have a material body, it does not matter, but your consciousness is uplifted. So going a little deeper into this, we live actually two lives, a conditional life and a constitutional life. A devotee lives both, but he's more serious about his constitutional life. Conditional life means eating, sleeping, mating, defending, looking after your family, uh, looking after your body, and many, many other things related to material. That is called conditional life, including responsibility if you are a married man or a leader in the society, or maybe a businessman, or there are people who are dependents on you. You actually, this all comes under the question, I mean, under the category of 
conditioned life. And constitutional life is, as we explained earlier, when you realize your constitutional position that you are a servant of Krishna, then that is called constitutional life. By, by nature, we are supposed to worship Krishna. Worship literally means bhaja. Bhaja means you love Krishna. That's why Sri Prabhupada translates that as loving devotional service to Krishna in English. <clears throat> anyway, when you're serious about your constitutional life, then what happens? Krishna actually personally takes care of you. How can this be understood? For example, there is a tree. This is explained in the 15th chapter about a tree. Urdhamullam Adarshak. I mean, if you go to the 15th chapter, very first verse, Krishna tells that the, in this world, there is an Urdhamullam, an, an upside down tree. And this tree, as you read further, this tree is coming from Brahma. Brahma is right on the top. That's why the tree is upside down. The roots are down. Sorry, the roots of the tree are up and the branches are down. And we engage in dharma, also kama, moksha. The tree is nourished by the three modes of nature. Fruitive activities take place. Materialism takes place. Speculation, so many things. And Krishna advises us, you know, cut that tree up. But in the purport, I think in the verse number three and four, Prabhupada says, even in this world, if you stand near a tree, near a lake, I mean, if you can see a tree whose, uh, what do you call, reflection is in the water, then we see two trees, original tree and the reflection. One is standing in actual proper position, the other one is upside down. So we have to actually understand these two trees. Real tree is a spiritual life, a spiritual world. Material world means upside down tree. Whatever is happening here is a reflective, a reflection of whatever is going on in the spiritual world. It means not real, but it's going in the other way. Simple thing is, there's love in the spiritual world. That love is exhibited in the world upside down in the form of lust. There's a bhakti yoga. Literally means coming out of the lust and going to love. From karma to prema. And that is what bhakti yoga does. This is a science we have to understand. So you find that whenever, whenever there's a difficulty, Brahma actually approaches Krishna. Like they say that <clears throat> many, many reasons Maharaji Purti is giving why you are coming down. But as far as she's concerned, she knows that you come down for the welfare of everyone, especially the devotees. Like, uh, what do you call it? Paritnaya Sadhu says, he comes to deliver the pious, comes to punish the impious, and reestablishes the religious spirit. But Prabhupada says, when you say pious, it literally means devotees. Krishna actually comes for his devotees. Other two are his side reasons. The main reason is to protect his devotees. So you'll find whenever the devotee is in problem, Krishna will come immediately. Like in the case of Prahlad Maharaj, he came immediately, he didn't waste time. In the time of, in the case of Gajendra, he didn't waste time, he came. When Kunti was in trouble, he came. So there are many, many examples like this. Main reason why Krishna appears is to protect his devotees. And this is the really loving relationship between Krishna and his devotees. So as we read Bhagavatam more and more, at least, I mean, with minimum having strong faith in Krishna only, you find that everything is revealed. Now, Bhagavatam is such a scripture that actually is meant to be discussed, not just be read. You read in the company of devotees, then the effect is more nicer. That's why uh, our Sansapik Acharya, uh, the founder of Acharya, or his country, Prabhupada wanted that every day there should be a Bhagavatam class in your center, in your temple. And if you can't go on, then close the temple. Very serious instruction. Every day there has to be Bhagavatam. Because by reading Bhagavatam, so one devotee said, what if there's no one there? He says, now, when you say no one there, it means the four walls are there. Read to the four walls. To that extent, Prabhupada says, 
sit down in front of the deity. No one is there, don't worry. Just take a Bhagavatam like this and read. The effect of Bhagavatam is so good, it brings about complete auspiciousness. The Bhagavatam is no ordinary scripture. Imagine Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself. He would hear Bhagavatam tale from Gadadhar Pandit. Imagine Gadadhar Pandit is his devotee. Yet, the way Gadadhar Pandit would, do, would narrate it and speak and explain it, it was so pleasing to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that way he would hear from him regularly. And in this way, years went by. A time came that Bhagavatam would not be read because when Gadadhar Pandit would read, he himself would go into ecstasy. He would actually see Krishna on every page. In those days, were, were, it was written on those, what do you call those leaves, you know, banana leaves, dried leaves, with a ink, black ink. So the tears would come out and the letters were hardly there. But still, he would read. And Mahaprabhu realized that actually there are no letters there. So he had another, another Bhagavatam copied for him, new one. So in this way, we find Bhagavatam is very, very dear to Krishna. I'm sorry, to devotees. Uh, Vaishwavanam Priyam. Priyam is very, very dear to the devotees. So our, if we are devotees, then Bhagavatam is dear to us. If you're not devotees, then we may not like Bhagavatam. We may say, oh, let me just hear on a mobile. Or maybe I hear on the internet. Yes, hearing that one is good enough, but not as good as when you hear in the company of devotees. Because there is a discussion. Devotees will ask this way, this way. Prabhupada compared a Bhagavatam class or a Bhagavad Gita class like a, a session in the court. If you, if you go to the court, there is a session. And uh, what do you call it? The criminal is brought out. He may or may not be a criminal. Then there is, an, there is a lawyer of his side and there is an opposing lawyer. And there's an argument. And this argument brings out so many things. So many things which you never know will all come out. And this is how Bhagavatam is read. So for example, Sri Prabhupada says in a lecture, if you go even to the Sanskrit verses, and if you practice reading Sanskrit also, you may not know Sanskrit, even if you may be zero at Sanskrit. But if you read one word, one word, you try to learn word by word, it will make so much meaning. And for the preachers, he says, you should meditate on these words before you give the class. So that if you have heard enough, you'll be able to speak enough. But if you don't heard, how will you speak? Again, hearing class. You have to hear before you speak. Hear right and you speak right. Hear transcendental message and speak transcendental. For example, the verse for today it says, Bhara Avara Aranya, to reduce the burden of the earth, the very first word. Then Bhuva means the world, Nava means boat, like a boat which became heavy, it sinks. For example, you, uh, I can't exactly remember the lecture where Prabhupada says that. When you become too sinful, it's like you are sitting in a boat made of cement. What happens? It will sink at once. Boat generally is made up of wood or light and metal and made up of in such a shape that it doesn't sink. But when you sin too much, it means your boat is made up of stones and cement. The moment you put it in the water, it will just sink. So let's not sink. That is, that's why the word uses Nava. And then Udado in the sea. When the, the sea is very rough, the boat is in danger. Siddhanteya, aggrieved, bhuri, extremely, bharena, burden. Hear the word bharena. When the earth becomes full of burden, then you come. And here we find, because Brahma prayed, prayed for you, Atma Bhuva means Brahma, prayed for you to come. That's why you came. So even if you go to Sanskrit words, doesn't matter if you don't know the meaning. Keep a book, write each meaning. And I think in a matter of a year, you learn so many words. And that's when Sri Prabhupada designed this book. So he made this translation in such a way that everyone would learn. Everyone, he wanted all of us to become preachers. Even if you know little, doesn't matter. But you preach, 
if you present it the way it is, you've done the work. You don't have to be a very famous preacher. You can be a normal person. Read properly, assimilate properly, and then explain properly without changing the meaning the way it is. You may explain according to time, place, and circumstances, but that is the way it is. Hare Krishna. So today's main point is that Brahma is born of Narayan and the creation, because uh, many people think creation is from chemicals. No. Creation is from a person, Krishna, and then Narayan later on, and then Brahma, and then from Brahma comes. Brahma is also called secondary creation. They said Brahma is, uh, Brahma, Krishna does creation, it's called Sarga in Sanskrit. And Brahma does secondary creation, it's called Visarga. Original creator is Krishna. He provides the ingredients. And then Brahma does the second creation. And Swetadeep is in one corner of the universe where resides Paramatma, Shirodakshai Vishnu, who is also there in our heart. So whenever Brahma has trouble, when he can't sort out problem, he himself goes there and prays to Krishna. And here the example is given of Krishna's coming. Even when Bhumi or the earth 5,000 years ago became burdened by these Kshatriya demons, <clears throat> not Kshatriyas, they're posing as Kshatriyas, they're actually demons. She, along with other demigods, went to pray and say, please come and remove my burden. And this is how the burden was removed by Krishna, bringing all these demons in the war of Mahabharata and killing them in a wholesome at once and remove the burden of the earth. Hare Krishna. I would invite you if there is any question, any suggestions, anything would you like to add? Hare Krishna, are there any comments or questions? <clears throat> Prabhuji, Sarga is the original expansion and Visarga is the expansion by Brahma. Yeah, original creator, creation is called Sarga. S-A-R-G-A, Sarga. And then the second creator, secondary creator, which is done by Brahma, is called Visarga. There are 10 subjects of Bhagavatam. So first is Sarga, second is Visarga. As you go on, many, many subjects become revealed to you. Okay? Anybody else has a question? And Prabhuji, just because my internet was unstable, you said mm. materialistic person is shok, uh, always has shoka, abhaya, and Shoka, Bhoya, and Moha. Moha. Shoka, Bhoya, Moha. Shoka, Moha, Bhaya. Shoka means uh, lamentation. Moha means illusion. Bhaya means fear. If you have Bhagavad Gita, you can go to 410. Vik, Vitta, Raga, Bhaya, Krodha. The cause of this is you become uh, Raga. Raga means you become attached. Materialism. Raga, bhaya, bhaya means fear, krodha, anger. This is again secondary. Originally, shoka, moka, bhaya. And how to overcome is a very long purport, but Sri Prabhupada explains very nicely how we also go through this. And how to come out of it is to take the shelter of a spiritual master. Then he explains adho shraddha, sadhu san, bhajan kriya, like that. Systematically, you come out of it without accepting the shelter of a spiritual master. How will you take the shelter of Krishna? So, first, Rupa Goswami says, Ado Guru Pada Ashram. You go to direct devotion. The first thing every devotee, I mean, anybody we should do, if he's serious about devotion, is accept a spiritual master. Okay. Thank you, Prabhuji. Are there any questions or comments from the group? <coughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Manchana Kali Samjau uh, Uche, Yolaka uh, MK, that uh, creation is not uh, by Lord. They say it is. Um, either big bang theory or by evolution yeah 
So true, true. how do true. I explain to someone in simple terms to say actually true. creation sarga is a, you know it started with krishna so i just wanted uh, something uh, which i can answer yes this is the whole section of bhagavata one whole section explains this pehla apne samjha unko ki when you came how were you created a person definitely you say from my father and mother not from chemicals they are also persons then with a the reference to bhagavad gita we say even your father the seed is given by krishna the fourth chapter he says aham bija pradapita i am the seed giving father and the mother also is a secretion they mix and a child is born means child the creation starts from there now if you are born from a father and mother they may argue all oh, this earth and what these are remains of the original spirit spirit is a person for example when there's a fire the fire is burning when the fire dies all you see is ash now you can't say ash is come from uh, automatically the cause is fire so the cause of everything is actually a person so bhagavatam explains tumhe samjha hi sako कि आप बधु क्रिएशन एक व्यक्ति हम कदाच एम किमिकल्स a big argument between a, a theology not a atheistic person is called dr kavur eh he is bringing an argument and the devotees are replying him Now imagine when this was going on each letter was published in the newspaper it became so powerful i mean so famous so letter after letter after letter And then the argument came okay you may say creation was not from god try to create a grass a blade of grass can you do that this was a challenge in those series of letters and then he failed he could create even a blade of grass to create even a blade of grass you need the seed of the grass where does the seed come from so life comes from life life does not come from chemical so question of big bang is not there this is just a theory no proof evolution of darwin is a theory is not a proof evolution of the- uh, darwin can easily be refuted by a simple example proper gives it says if we were born from monkeys then the monkeys should not be there that they have already gone they have brought us but how can the monkeys are also there proper says when brahma was creating he created all the species even animals monkeys apes even beings trees plants everything was created simultaneously 8.4 million species of life now if a person is faithless very difficult to explain but if he is at least logic he, he believes a little in logic that this is the logic he can present is that it's not a mixture of chemicals robert gives another an example of course that devotee is not there anymore he was a scientist in our moment he, he passed away now he, he was in the university of california and there was a visiting professor who was saying that he wrote a very big what do you call formula on the board you know you know how you write formulas maybe kitty the mother the mother she knows better this and this and co and n and this and this he wrote a big and he was he was trying to he was a visiting he was a very famous professor and he told the students that if i get all these uh, chemicals i will get create life so this this devotee was also there in the class he said we have all these chemicals chemicals in our library we can give you right now can you create what was the answer no that i can't do. <laughs> that was the answer and from that day onwards nobody attended his class nobody because he was talking nonsense even i think it was it einstein or i don't know one of the famous scientists 
uh, when he went to school, uh, his teacher was a theist, and he came, I think, from a very good Catholic family, Christian family, and he, he was someone who go to church every Sunday. So he says, look at this uh, people who believe in God. They believe in someone whom they have never seen. In this way, he would actually rebuke the students who, who are believers in God. So one day, I think it was scientific, if it was Einstein, he stood up. If not scientists, I, 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 or Newton, I don't know one of them. I forget the name anyway. He stood up and said that every day you say that we believe in something we see. Then have you seen your intelligence? And the teacher said, no. Can you see my intelligence? He said, no. So how do I, how do I believe that I am intelligent? Do you have, you have intelligence? He said, no, no, that has to be cultivated. He said, no. What you see is, in, is what you believe does not make any sense. There are so many things we don't see. Neither I can see my mind, neither you can see your mind. In this way, the teacher understood the message of this young boy. He was only seven years old. From that day onwards, he stopped rebuking people who believe in God. This is one of the big, I think it is Einstein, if I'm not wrong. So in this way, there are many arguments you can always place. But someone who is, I can give you one example. I'll speak in Gujarati. Once, there's a search center, a very big mall. So, a friend, uh, Prabhuda Shah, he came to teach you. He said, 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 how, how do you explain such people? Can someone stay in a pillar for millions of years? Not possible. But his argument, oh, ito pelati jato pillar mightly nikero. Then again, ki Krishna janam bito ike joyu, koi bhagwan janam na liye ike. Tiare me nashiya na example, wale janam na to liye to pillar to atheistic people, it's wasting time. So don't waste your time. Okay, Prabhuji? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I encountered, I encountered somebody similar today. And, uh -huh. uh, so that's why I say, how do I explain this person in a simple terms? So yeah, some, some of the things I can. I think like, like at the end, I can give up because you don't need to uh convince them if they are not convinced no no it's a waste of time even in english they say don't argue with fools it's wasting time most people don't know the difference thank you it's easy to teach innocent people rather than a tasty innocent mouths when a bora mouths yeah. is very difficult. Thank you. Would you in that circumstance, can we give him the book, Life Comes from Life? Mm. Or we should not even give them a book? No, if they are, if they are intelligent enough, if they, if they read, they will understand. Because I read this almost seven to eight years ago, and I know it's fantastic, fantastic argument. It's almost 20 to 30 pages argument. One letter from there, no one letter from there. One letter from that Dr. Abraham Kavu. He's uh, one of the big men in Sri Lanka in those times, in the 70s, 70s or 80s. And he presents an argument, devotees reply, set of devotees. And by the nature's call, he passed away <laughs> after the last letter. So the, the final letter was the devotee, devotee wrote that a scientist could not save himself, what to talk of others. <laughs> that was also published in the newspaper. 
Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Are there any other questions or comments? Mm -hmm. If there are no other questions, can I request Avinash Prabhuji to close the session, please? Avinash Prabhu? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rukman Das Prabhu. Um, I really enjoyed the session today. Uh, so if everyone can unmute and um, chant Hare Krishna on behalf of uh, uh, das Prabhu, so just to glorify him. So I, I'll start. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Shila Prabhupada ki jai. jai. Grace Rukmadas Prabhu ki jai. Jai. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Avinash Prabhuji, for ending the session. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.